In today's tutorial, we're going to look at data collection and how we make our experiments valid based on facts that we can collect as we're going along. Now, we can collect two types of data, quantitative data, which deals with numbers, qualitative data that deals with just uh, words describing. We really like to focus on the quantitative type data because that is more factual. We can actually see it. Everybody can agree and uh, we can actually verify each other's results by repeating the experiment someone's already done. So the first thing we're going to look at is our base quantities that we use. These are the measurable quantities. We can literally measure these and that allows us to use them later on. But we need to look at our standard units that we use in which to measure these. So when we do use them in a formula, everybody's on the same a scale and therefore we're able to get the same numbers or the same values. The first one is length. We measure length in terms of meters. That's the unit or the system that we use. All of these are going to be based on the metric system, but really length has to be converted into meters in order for us to be able to um, use them in formulas. Now, obviously I have a meter stick here, but we have different devices that will allow us to measure length. We can use, uh, now we have digital scanners that, you know, you just flash towards the area you want and it'll measure it to you. So there's different types of things, but keep in mind, for general purposes, length is measured in meters and we use some sort of measuring device like a meter stick. We have mass that is measured in our base scale of kilograms. Now, if our amounts are small, we don't have to use a very large scale. We can use a smaller one, which is the case in our setting for our classroom. So we're going to have a, hopefully, a digital scale like this for most of our activities, where we can actually uh, measure smaller amounts and we can determine what we want our scale to show, our digital scale to show it as, so we can put it in grams and do a simple conversion into kilograms. But when we're measuring mass, we're talking about how much stuff is inside of something and we use a scale or a balance such, such as this one. The next one is uh, time. We're all aware of how to take time. We've grown up with it since you were very little, you were very aware of time, and it's measured in our base unit of seconds. Even if it takes hours, we still have to convert it or um, calculate it back into seconds. And obviously we have really nice stopwatches that we can use just depending on the models. Our cell phones have them. We can have smaller scale stopwatches. We can have larger ones. It doesn't matter. But when we're talking about time, obviously we're using some sort of um, clock or watch and we need one base unit in seconds. Then we have temperature. Temperature is a measurement of obviously how hot something is or cold, and really it's measuring the lack of heat. And we can use our old-fashioned type thermometers, which we would read, and our thermometers are basically in Celsius, and then we would have to convert it into Kelvin. There is some thermometers in Kelvin, but um, the base scale that we usually measure in is literally in Celsius, and then we convert it to Kelvin. Again, it's got to be in Kelvin. We will be using digital thermometers that make it a lot easier for us to be able to determine a more accurate reading instead of just trying to see where the little red line is at on these. Then we have electrical current. It's measured in what we call an ampere. Electrical current is a measurement that we'll be looking at more next semester for, this, for the fields and waves electricity component of this course. And again, it's a digital device that will measure how much current is going through um, a system. And then we have volume, which is something we will be using a lot more here in this first semester. Volume is measuring how much space something takes. Well, if we're typically when we're talking about volume, we're talking about liquids, and therefore we would use a graduated cylinder. It has the markings here, so it's smart, and that's why it's graduated. That's my trick to remembering what to use. But when you're measuring volume, basically liquids, you're measuring um, things in terms of liters, and a graduated cylinder would give you that reading in liters. Now, we can measure the volume of something, it's like a cube, or geometric figures 
and we would be using lengths and calculating the volume. Uh, centimeters cubed, meters cubed, whatever it is, but we can actually calculate based on length what volume would be of a solid. And so really, when we're doing our base quantities, things that we can literally measure, we're looking at these components right here. Now, from there, everything else that we measure, such as velocity, speed, acceleration, gravity's pull on us, acceleration due to gravity, force, whatever it is, is a combination of these units here. And that's where we come into the derived data. These are calculated by using the measurable base quantities listed above, right? So say for instance, we have speed that we will be getting into with uh, motion in a few weeks, which is length divided by the amount of time it takes for something to travel that length. And so we would combine those two in a formula do some math and we would end up with a derived number and derived units. It's a combination of them. And that concludes our basic idea of data collection and our base quantities of measurable data.